um, you should be able to see it now. Um, so today, um, it, it's really my pleasure to, to introduce you to the NGBR bioprinter and, and as well as the uh, laser bioprinting technology that it features. Um, so NGB, just, just a quick uh, overall view, is a platform that was designed by Poetis uh, to provide biologists with a comprehensive, automated, and powerful instrument to take tissue engineering uh, and regmed further. So there are two versions for NGB at the moment. There's the R model for translational and medical research and the C model for clinical applications. So today's webinar will focus only on NGBR, but the technology behind the platform is actually uh, very similar. So this is what uh, NGBR looks like. And as you can tell, uh, it's all embedded into a biosafety cabinet, which makes it a, a very comfortable instrument to work for, as you'll see in a few, uh, a few slides from now. Um, everything is operated through a six axis robotic arm and uh, a touchscreen interface uh, for reproducibility and automation. And then of course it features different bioprinting technologies that we're gonna see now, as well as a, an optional onboard microscope uh, for quality control purposes um, and, and target bioprinting. So let's look at those different uh, bioprinting technologies that NGBR features. First, we've got bioextrusion, which is probably the most popular and well-known out there. So this allows us to print bioinks uh, through a nozzle in terms of filaments, uh, pretty convenient for more uh, viscous type biomaterials. Then we've got inkjet bioprinting, which is also a nozzle-based technology. But here, uh, we're not printing filaments, but drops of bioinks or hydrogels. And that is more suitable for uh, liquid type biomaterials. And at the very core of NGBR lies the uh, laser bioprinting head. So that's a technology that we've developed here at Poetis. And the main difference um, is that um, that's a nozzle-free technology, right? So we'll see it in a few slides from now, but this is, uh, this is actually really, um, really important. So if you look at both nozzle-based printing heads here, these can uh, both be used to print either cell-free or cell-loaded bioinks. Now, where laser is different, uh, from the others is, is, is you have the capacity to print cells alone directly in their cultural media. So there's no need to mix them up in the bioink. Uh, speaking of which, I think it's quite, it's quite cool to see the difference between what we call conventional bioprinting and uh, the cytocentric approach that is enabled by um, the NGBR system. So with conventional bioprinting, people are usually uh, relying on the bioinks, so a mix of living cells and biomaterials that most of the time gets extruded in XYZ. Uh, NGBR, on the other hand, allows for a different approach where cells and biomaterials are actually printed separately from one another with different technologies, right? So laser bioprinting definitely changes the way that you approach biomaterials because shear stress isn't an issue anymore. So you no longer choose a bioink based on its uh, shear stress limiting properties. Uh, what you're now interested in is their biological properties and their uh, capacity to promote cell adhesion and biological processes, right? So it's kind of a shift from a chemistry oriented to a more biology oriented standpoint. Now, unlike bioextrusion, cells are not extruded out of a nozzle, but they get transferred as you'll see uh, in, in the video now. Uh, they get transferred and deposited from a ribbon to a receiver. So we are basically using energy from a laser beam source to create kind of a cavitation-like bubble, which induces a jet of a, a tiny micro droplet, which uh, of course contains cells. So typically from eight to 15 microliters of this cell-loaded culture media solution is deposited onto a golden metallized substrate. And, and this uh, prevents um, cells from being impacted by laser pulses. So to sum up, laser bioprinting is a unique nozzle-free technology that has this capacity to precisely distribute cell droplets spatially uh, and according to specific and tailored micro patterns uh, designed to help guide self-organization of cells, uh, which is the basis of 4D bioprinting. And that's a topic that Mikhail uh, will introduce and spend um, quite a lot of time on uh, in, in about five minutes from now. Uh, last but not least, I think this is pretty important to mention uh, that laser technology is also compatible with a great deal of cells. So personally here at Poitis, we've worked with uh, primary human cells as well as embryonic pluripotent stem cells 
And we even have a colleague working on plant cells uh, at the moment quite successfully. So in total, we've tested more than 26 cell types um, and all with uh, an average viability ratio of 92 to, to 95%. Uh, so now let's, let's quickly delve into the actual bioprinting process because I think that's what most of you are, are interested in uh, and start with why a multimodal instrument boosting not one, but several bioprinting technologies is actually an advantage. Um, so what we're gonna see here is a typical, say scaffold-free soft tissue 3D biofabrication uh, workflow with NGBR, uh, printing layers of cells with laser bioprinting and layers of extracellular matrix or biomaterial uh, with micro valve. And so what we do is uh, we use the robotic arm to go back and forth in between those two bioprinting heads and technologies to go from a 2D uh, tissue to a 3D and then 4D uh, model, right? Giving it time for, for biological processes to occur. Uh, and here's the same workflow, but tracked with the onboard microscope that I mentioned uh, in the first slide. And so as you can tell here, laser bioprinting has this uh, genuine advantage to allow for very precise positioning of cells and, and for a specific pattern to be maintained across many layers. So here they only have like two layers of cells, but typically you can use, you know, 10, 12, uh, 14, and so on. Um, so before I, I, I give it uh, on to, to Mikael for a, a more application review uh, session, I uh, just want to quickly mention about the, the main key advantages to laser bioprinting. Uh, th there are three major advantages that we, we, we like to mention, and that's cell viability, resolution, and cell distribution. So let me start with uh, viability. As, as we've seen, uh, since cells do not suffer from any pressure or shear stress, then the risk of cells getting injured or damaged in the process is, is very minimal. So we've run a lot of live dead viability tests on, on different cell types and the average viability ratio goes around 95%, which is, which is really, really good. Uh, the second advantage here is uh, everything to do with resolution and more specifically the control over resolution that the user has. So as Mikael will present in a couple of minutes, laser bioprinting lets you tweak a couple of parameters which help you adjust the volume of droplet and the number of cells per droplet. So this means you can work with both uh, cellular spots or cell clusters and spheroids, or even get very close to single cell bioprinting. And last but not least, you also have the possibility to spatially distribute cells and organize them within the bioprinted construct itself. So this means that you can easily come up with uh, very precise and specific cell patterns and choose to deposit cells in a certain way based on what you're uh, well trying to achieve, right? So this is a huge advantage compared to bioextrusion where you can only adjust cell concentration but not that spatial organization of cells. Um, so as you can see in this time lapse, uh, time lapse sorry, uh, video, um, the impact of a specific cell pattern uh, onto morphogenesis is, is, is actual. Um, and, and with cell migration and proliferation occurring post-printing. This is what we like to call 4D bioprinting here at Poetis. Uh, and my colleague, Mikael, will now delve more into this topic, uh, giving several examples of applications uh, using the NGBR platform. So Mikael, on to you. Uh, thanks, Antoine. Uh, so hi all, uh, my name is Mikael. Uh, I'm business application manager here uh, at Poietis. So a part of my job is to uh, understand customers' needs and then lead related uh, applicated projects. Other part is to manage uh, R&D projects with industrials and also with academics through European projects. Today, I wanted to show you some direct applications related to our unique platform technology. So, uh, laser bioprinting is another free technology known to be resolutive, uh, allowing excellent cell viability while preserving cell integrity. But it's also very fast. Uh, this printing speed is possible because of uh, the scanning mirror, 
Uh, this small scanner located on the optical path of the laser allows to move the beam quickly and precisely to various positions on the ribbon. And these positions are the ones we have previously defined as pattern when we create a CAD file. So for each of these positions, a drop is ejected, forming the desired pattern. And on this video, uh, a pattern of about 400 droplets has been printed, and you can see uh, how fast it goes. So therefore, it's really easy to generate cell patterns in a high throughput and in a precise and reproducible way. Uh, you can print, sorry, uh, you can print different cell types as illustrated here. And this ability to co-culture different cell types is very powerful, especially for cancer research, as we know that tumor cells make constant use of over specific cell types in their surrounding to progress on their in their endeavor. So thanks to the laser technology, this type of study is quick to set up and can generate a large amount of data in a reductionist 2D assay and of course in 3D. So here in 3D, different cell layers can be generated and studied. Uh, two fibroblastic populations visualized in green and in the red were printed with laser and in between layers of collagen were printed with the microwave. So confocal imaging was performed to visualize them. Uh, the spacing, uh, the pacing of these patterns in Z can finally be modulated uh, by the thickness of the material layer printed uh, with the microwave in between. So here you can see the precision of the cell positioning uh, on this video. Co-culture and cellular influences can therefore easily be studied in 2D and in 3D. So uh, with laser printing, you can control two important things. So first, the organization of a pattern with a resolution of tens of microns. Basically, uh, you precisely position droplets containing cells and medium or cells and material. And that's what we saw before. But you can also control the quantity of cells inside your droplets. To do that, you play with uh, the laser energy and or uh, bioink cell concentration, as we see here. And by enhancing uh, the laser, uh, sorry, energy and or cell concentration, you will obtain bigger and or more concentrated droplets. Basically, you can modulate um, these parameters to control how much cells you will have in each pattern. So now, how can this be useful for tissue fabrication? So here we printed a pattern of fibroblast over a collagen layer. The pattern is the same on the two samples. What differs is the quantity of cells by pattern. On the left, there is a higher quantity of cells. Uh, we printed around 50 cells per droplet. And on the right, um, we only printed around 20. What we see is that the final result is the same. Cell migrates in an homogeneous way, but what differs is the chronology. So you see that on the left, when you have less cells, they migrate faster. So only playing on local cell concentration enable to slow down or accelerate some events like cell migration. And this can have a major impact on tissue engineering and in morphogenesis. Here, we use the same workflow uh, but this time, the quantity of cells by droplets uh, was the same for all conditions. And we played on the pattern design. We played on the spacing between the droplets we printed. You can see here the analysis in light sheet microscopy. On the left, we see the three different patterns post printing, so at day zero. And on the right, uh, we see the evolution at day two. Again, the result is that cell migration can be modulated and here playing on the position of the patterns. So both precise cell positioning and local control of cell concentration enable to modulate in a controlled way the chronology of some biological events. So not only we can control the chronology, but we can also guide uh, the evolution of a tissue and new function. So here, playing at the same time on pattern spacing and quantity of cells by pattern, 
we were able to control sale, uh, cell alignment uh, a long time. So on the first picture, you have the initial pattern. Uh, then at day one, we can see cell migration. And finally, at day four, we see the final results with fibroblasts perfectly aligned perpendicular to the initial pattern. So to summarize, what I wanted to illustrate is that when you do 3D bioprinting, uh, you organize matrix and cells in space. But what you obtain after printing will evolve a long time. Cells proliferate, they migrate, they interact with the surrounding environment. And from this initial pattern, specific biological function will emerge. Laser printing for resolution and precise local positioning enable to control key parameters for tissue fabrication and for morphogenesis. That's why we call our bioprinter a 4D bioprinting platform. And this notion is really important to address tissue morphogenesis and complex tissue fabrication. Using our 4D bioprinting platform and a similar methodology, we developed a few years ago the first commercial bioprinted skin models, OIS skin. So here you have the full workflow. The first step uh, is the design uh, of the tissue model using our in-house CAD. Then uh, the fabrication, so starting with the dermis. The major components of the dermis are fibroblast and collagen, and we printed them layer by layer. So collagen is printed homogeneously uh, with a microwave and fibroblasts uh, are printed with a specific pattern to control their migration during their mismaturation and they are printed with the laser technology. Then there is a maturation step and uh, at day five, uh, keratinocytes are printed with uh, a different pattern and then again a maturation. So in the design of a full thickness skin model, uh, the keratinocyte deposition step is very important. Uh, the cells must form an homogeneous layer before the passage in the air liquid interface, uh, marking the beginning of the differentiation and allowing to uh, a good stratification of the epidermis. And here we see the difference between a model where the keratinocytes were manually deposited with a pipette, um, so on the right, so we can see that they present empty zones and we can also see 3D areas where keratinocytes are already differentiated. Then you have on the left the condition where keratinocytes were printed in an homogeneous layer with the laser and cells are confluent and homogeneously organized in 2D. And again, this phase can be modulated with the laser uh, chronologically um, by controlling uh, the keratinocyte density. So in order to accelerate or slow down the maturation of the epidermis and the whole tissue. And this makes various uh, keratinocyte functions emerge a long time or not. And here is the result uh, after maturation uh, of our skin model. So this nice histological section uh, on the left with homogeneous cells and well-oriented basal layers, presence of granular cells and of stratum corneum. And we can see also uh, immunostaining of the sample assessing expression of epidermal differentiation markers like cytokeractin 5 and 10 and the proper location of both of them. So not only cell patterning is interesting, but also material patterning. Our multimodal bioprinter offers the possibility to pattern various materials in 3D and thus create micro environments for the development of more complex in vitro models. So here I took the example of, I, of an experiment that I did myself. Uh, I wanted to test the patterning of alginate and I used two microwaves heads uh, one loaded with CACL2 and the other with alginate. So here uh, up you can see the, the CAD design and by co-printing locally with these two modules, I generated the alginate patterns uh, visible on the picture below. And on the right, you can see the geometry of one of these patterns uh, observed from the side. Then I wanted to see if the generation of such a micro environment could have an influence on the development of the skin model. So commercialized, commercialized skin models all have a flat dermal epidermal junction interface. Uh, 
And this is not the case in vivo, where uh, there are microvilli at these interfaces. And this structural organization is important for various functions and cellular exchanges. I wanted to see if by patterning alginate over a cellularized collagen matrix before adding keratinocytes could influence the organization of the epidermis and this junction. So here you can see the results. Um, so what we see is that the epidermis is not perfectly organized, um, but so adjustments are to be found. But I wanted just to illustrate for this experiment that it is possible to create micro environments in an automated way with our system. And that bioprinting is a really interesting tool to develop, but also to complexify tissue models. Laser bioprinting also allows creation and maintenance of spheroids. So spheroids can be obtained in a pseudo 2D matrix, as shown on this image, or in a 3D matrix. The process is really fast. Uh, we locally repeat several prints uh, of few seconds to concentrate cells, so again with the laser. And by playing on this local cell concentration uh, or also on the, mat on the matrix environments, we can induce the formation of a large quantity of homogeneous size spheroids. So you can also do co-culture. So as is illustrated on this picture, um, you can visualize in uh, the bioprinter your spheroids at various stages of maturation a long time with the integrated microscope. You can then uh, pinpoint and select manually areas of interest, uh, as you see here with the circle um, in yellow. And you do that for the feature uh, viewprint, which is integrated in, uh, in our platform. And then we can print a new cell type at desired location. So this can be interesting in oncology area research, where you could create spheroid mim mimicking primary tumor in Ifroboot. And then a long time, you could print new cell types like fibroblast and study epithelial to mesenchymal transition of tumor cells at the edge of tumor mass. Finally, I wanted to show you another application related to the viewprint feature, uh, the possibility of placing cells in custom microglids. So in our case, for one of our projects, we needed to distribute mesenchymal cells into a selection of wells across a bioprinted microgrid array. So the size of these micro wells was pretty small, uh, about uh, 200 microns. And viewprint and laser precision proved very helpful, helpful in, in this experiment. So the custom microglids were uh, imaged with our integrated microscope inside the bioprinter. Nine regions of interest were easily manually spotted and cells got printed with the laser as requested. So here on the right is the final result uh, with a closer view at some of these wells. And we can see that cells are precisely positioned uh, into each spotted well, illustrating the eye control over resolution that laser barrier printing offers. And this is the end of my presentation. Thanks all for attending. Uh, Antoine, back to you. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Mikael. Um, I hope uh, it was, uh, I mean, that's a lot of information, right? So I hope uh, those attending um, found the, uh, the application review um, interesting and clear enough. If you have any questions for Mikael, uh, please feel free to use the q and uh, box uh, to write down all your questions. And we're gonna have at least 15 minutes at the end of this presentation to address and answer any questions uh, uh, or inquiries that you may have. So really feel free to use the uh, Q&R box. Um, this is what I like the most with webinars is for people to have the possibility to, to ask us directly uh, any question they have. Uh, before we wrap this up, uh, there's a third and last part um, that I'd like to share with you guys, which is uh, just showing you how it feels like and how, you, you know, um, how, how the NGBR works basically, right? So having a look at the workflow. Uh, and we're going to have a few videos for you as well. Um, just before that, there, there are basically six main steps towards a bioprinted construct. Uh, so it all starts with designing the actual architecture to be printed. So NGBR comes, of course, with a computer-assisted design software, so CAD software, uh, that can be operated from any computer. 
uh, and which you will use to either well, create issues from scratch or load 3 dstl uh, files uh, and convert them into bioprint table layers, right? So um, second um, is uh, a step that consists basically of transferring that CAD file. So basically the design that you've made on the software all over to the engineer instrument. So either with a USB drive or through the network, uh, if you've connected your, your device. Now, once the file is loaded on the platform, then you have the possibility to sequence your printing jobs. Uh, so set the order in which uh, jobs must be executed or you know, adding new ones like capturing an image with the onboard microscope after uh, each, la each layer is printed and so forth. So you could choose to have a fully automated nonstop process or to have the instrument stop at each step uh, so you can check it out. So it's totally up to, to personal uh, preferences. The last step before printing um, is to simply load the bioinks. And you're gonna see in a minute with videos how this works. Um, th this, I, I actually, uh, uh, I like the video format because it's just, uh, it's just much, much, much easier for people to, to see how it works. Um, and then to initiate biofabrication, all you have to do is just click on start bioprinting in the NGBR interface, uh, and the instrument will crack on printing the, the sequence that you've loaded. And last but not least, while well, you may visualize the bioprinted construct either through the cabinet window uh, or with the uh, onboard microscope if you have opted to have it. Um, so this uh, shows you, this first video shows you how NGBR can actually be used, of course, as a printer, but also as a bio safety cabinet. Um, so then, you know, killing a couple of birds with one stone, if I may say. Um, which, which again makes it pretty convenient because well, you have all your cell related work uh, in in one same place. Um, here um, we show you how to load either so ready to use bio inks these work as well, or just specific biomaterials directly into the nozzle based bioprinting head. So here uh, I'm, I'm referring to uh, microvalve and, and bio extrusion. Uh, so NGBR is basically compatible with three and five ML cartridges, which can easily get connected to the instrument, as you can see now, uh, and inserted into the print heads. It's as sim simple as that. And then once you're, uh, once you're ready, once the print head is loaded, then you're ready to buy a print. And here is how it's, it's done with nozzle based by printing. So both the extrusion and inkjet heads can come either standard or thermoregulated if needed. And thermoregulation goes from four to 60 Celsius degrees, uh, which can be useful depending on what biomaterials you're uh, relying on, whether, whether it's collagen, alginate, uh, and so on. Uh, so the extrusion head prints uh, filaments of up to 100 micrometers, and the inkjet head does drops of up to 100 NL. Now, as an optional um, um, device, you have the possibility to have a single or a dual wavelength UV lamp added to the instrument uh, and therefore well to the workflow for uh, cross-linking and polymerization purposes. So 365 and or uh, 405 nanometers in terms of wavelengths. And typically, well, this is a printing job that may be very uh, easily included into the bioprinting sequence. Uh, through the, uh, the interface uh, right beforehand. Now let's move on to what people are usually the most uh, curious about. And this is how to um, you know, load the bioink to the laser bioprinting system. So as explained earlier, cells are actually printed directly in their culture media, as you can see uh, in, in the video. So simply deposit a drop of that cell media onto the ribbon. So that gold metallized substrate we've, we've talked about during the last session and just gently spread it across as the, the lady is performing here. And then simply place the holder on top of the laser by printing head, then you're ready to go. So loading the bio ink onto the laser uh, printing system is 15 to 20 seconds long. Now it takes a bit of practice, but usually people are mastering this pretty well after uh, a couple of uh, experiments. And then once loaded, of course, well, it's time to initiate the printing sequence. So as you can see in the video, we're printing upside down. So the robotic arm will automatically flip the receiver uh, when approaching the laser head as we print uh, against gravity here. 
So as you see now, transferring cells is an extremely fast process. I forgot to mention that you can print up to 10,000 droplets per every second. So typically printing an entire layer or an entire grid of cells, uh, you know, takes about microseconds um, at the most. Um, so here the robotic arm stops working, but if you had a whole sequence loaded, then it would basically carry on with uh, further jobs, of course, right? So let's just uh, review. This is, this is uh, our last slide before questions, but just a quick review of the major advantages to the instrument that we've seen. Uh, and of, of course, in my opinion, uh, the fact that you can spatially distribute cells very you know, precisely and specifically is, is definitely a, a key advantage here because that's what takes you to 4D bioprinting, uh, to more functional and more uh, complex uh, tissues. Uh, and of course, well, control over tissue morphogenesis, right? So those two are definitely connected. Uh, then since the, the instrument is operated on robotics, well, it makes the um, workflow definitely more reproducible uh, and automated, which is, which is good because we're looking at operator independent processes um, towards more you know, medical and clinical applications, of course. Cell viability uh, is definitely something to consider if you're looking to, to produce uh, tissues that are functional. Uh, then multimodality is, is good. So the fact that you have three different bioprinting technologies, that's what you know, is going to help you come up with more complex tissues that better replicate or mimic uh, organic ones. And then, of course, the fact that you can you know, adjust resolution based and according to the, the application that you have. Uh, well, it's definitely of interest, uh, maybe for oncology purposes or, uh, you know, basic bioengineering or um, regenerative medicine. Um, so this is the end of, of our slides. Uh, Tim, I'm just going to um, um, leave it back to you and maybe we can have uh, a few questions answered.